I was recently invited to California as Kloss had a product launch for their new 1000 series self-propelled forage harvesters. The main focus of this event was the new series of forage harvesters, but it was a lot more than that. They had their full lineup of products out here, product specialists, several people from the company here in the U.S. and Germany, and they had workshops. So we got to see the chopper run out in the field here. And then in this video, we actually headed over to a dairy farm where they was dumping a silage and building a silage pile here. We got to learn from some product experts about a couple different things, and you'll see that in this video here. This video is mainly focused on the Zerion tractors and building a silage pile. They're also going to talk about chop quality, corn silage processing scores, and the Cost Connect app. I'll now turn this video over to these two gentlemen, and they will talk about the things I just mentioned. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome here to our um, explanation here about uh, silage quality and pick packing. Uh, yeah, I will directly hand over to Guido. Yeah, my name is Jörg. I'm the global product manager for the Jaguar here. And we have a look later a little bit about silage quality, corn silage processing score. And Guido will hand over, give us you know, some insights regarding uh, Xerion. Yeah, thank you so much, Jörg. Um, welcome, everybody. Happy to have you here as well. And uh, my name is Guido Hildering, and I'm now living since four months here in the U.S. in Omaha. I'm uh, located in the headquarter, and I'm working as the uh, head of sales for tractors and implements, whatever this means. Um, so we are willing to get more business done together with you, with our tractors, with our overall machine part. Uh, and product family that we are going to offer to you now and in the future. And this is why we developed the Xerion 12, as it's shown here, uh, several years ago for the Northern American market. You see here a wheeled version, but we have as well the Terra Truck version, so a track version with the triangle track, uh, which is looking like the ones from competition, but it's an own development. Uh, out of our own house back in Paderborn in Germany where we have done as well the development for the Terra Truck versions you might know on our combines and as well on our forage harvesters. So the question is how does this thing start? Because as you can see we have a rigid frame. The tractor is not articulating like uh, the John Deere's over there and we have a bit of a different approach versus our competitors. And if you look back, we have a bit of history about this tractor and this tractor ranges. In 1978, Helmut Klaas initiated a project where it was at that time called the Project 207. And there we started working on a tractor and it was the first class tractor we worked on because typically we've been in harvesting company and he was the first time thinking about a machine which is not a tractor it's more it's more a system tractor so the idea was to carry um, the application and the process like the implement like a tillage or like um, if you have a seeder that this is getting super close to the rear to the tractor and the seeding tank, for instance, which is more the heavy load on the machine, is getting then onto the tractor behind the cabin. And in the same time, he said that some applications might work different, so we need to uh, drive much more backwards than forward. So he decided to ask in the project to turn the cabin. So this means you could lift the cabin, turn it around, and then backwards was forward, and forward was backwards because then you had a better view to the process, to the working process, and this was the overall idea. In end of the 80s, uh, the project was public announced, and in 1993, we brought to the market the first version of Xerion 2500, 250 horses, roughly, and this machine was already huge for our European expectations. So everything in Europe, whoever has been there is a bit different and for sure much smaller. And at that period of time, the tractor was already huge for what we've done and seen in the market back at the time. And the tractor was continued developed, but he decided as well 
to not just throw, throw the machines into the market and then let's have a look what's going to happen. They decided in four years to just bring into the market 80 units to listen and to learn, to understand from you, from our customers, what is really the need behind. Six years later, we introduced then the new Xerion series and further six years later, in 2009, we introduced the Xerion 4500 and the Xerion 5000, which you might know as well uh, out of the crowd here. Who has experience with our Xerion 4500 and Xerion 5000? Anybody of you on pit packing? So, and we see some limitations there, right? So it might be somehow uh, on a long-term run that we see due to super heavy loads and ballasting and so on that we see okay there are some not weak points but we have, we have you have much more rollover the surface on the pit is looking much finer and you see as well that the complete packing of the machine is working well even if you are inside walls on on pits like that where Helmut Klaas and the company was ever consistent is our CBT approach. So all tractors that you can buy from us are working with CBTs because we see a lot of advantages and you will see the same here on the pit. The John Deere is typically working with engine revs all day long, around 1,900, 2,000 engine revs. Power shift, you do not know uh, when to shift and even on heavy load, it's not super easy to just shift because then you see, okay, the tractor might get stalled. With our CVT here, we can, depending on the load, just increase the speed or slow it down, and we can quite well work all day long. And we are driving all day long with 1,400 uh, 1, engine rest, where we see already, in terms of efficiency and, and fuel use, somehow advantages. And if you go into packing on its own, we are lowering even down to 1,100 engine revs. Versus the Xerion 4,500 and 5,000, we increased the length of the cabin by roughly 11 inches to ensure that all of you guys feeling more comfortable. Ben is always turning the seat and you can see Ben is not the smallest guy on the planet. Um, he's turning the seat, driving all day long in his comfortable uh, position is all day long working just with the motion lever on the right hand side and i guess due to the fact that he's never getting off the tractor it's sometimes if he has a leakage then he needs to get off the tractor so ben has a leakage not the tractor um, <laughs> then he gets off the tractor but otherwise he, he will stay all day long there and to us this was the most important thing to develop to deliver to you as our customers a super convenient and comfortable machine and tractor and this is quite working well. So I will now ask Ben to get back onto the pit and hand over to Jörg who is going to speak to you about our quality app. Thanks Guido. So Ben is going back so we will have later, we will have later a little bit of a chance to have a look to it, how he is doing it, the pick packing. My, uh, what I want to talk to you is a little bit about here, top quality analysis via Class Connect. So that means here we developed an app uh, or a function in our Class Connect which is able to uh, give you an idea about the corn silage processing score. Who of you guys is working with the corn silage processing score? Is the laboratories together? Someone of you is doing it or never heard about it or? Nobody heard about it? Okay, it was different than the group before. So the corn silage processing score is an indication about the processing of the silage. How good it is processed and how much starch is in there and how good the starch is digestible for the cow. So it was, uh, he invented in the US by Dr. Dave Mertens and uh, he um, they figured out a testing procedure to evaluate this process. So finally, it's, like, it's a little bit small picture, it's this road top shaker uh, which can do it um, to detect uh, in the laboratory to get the value for the customer, for the dairyman. So, but the challenge is, if we work together with the laboratory, uh, we take a sample today, get the feedback tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, and even someone told me, some dairy farmers, 
it needs one week to get to the side. But then probably we are already finished with the harvest here, so we cannot do any adjustments on the machine. So another alternative to make uh, is checking the corn uh, processing is this cup. So you fill the cup up, put it on the table um, with the material, and then you check for uncracked kernels. But um, this is only, yeah, nothing, it's only a theory, so what you can do. So if you see the uncracked kernels and you are not happy with it, you make the adjustments on the chopper. And uh, But you might do it different than I do, what is processing, and everybody has a different opinion. But that's why it's so important to have this final value, the corn silage processing score. So how does it work in general? I will demonstrate it soon. And uh, we take some pictures, we have this blue plate as a reference. This is the reference size to really measure the uh, kernels and have an idea about the size of the kernels. Because the corn silage processing score finally is a value what is detected with this roll top shaker when everything is passing a 4.75 millimeter sieve. This is detected as a corn silage processing score. So with this app, um, we will upload the pictures, what you took with the app, five to 10 uh, pictures you have to do to a server and an AI model. So we are also working here with AI is uh, counting then uh, the kernels, which are bigger than 4.75 millimeters and smaller. And out of this ratio, we get the corn silage processing score. So uh, quite handy. So I need just to change over the technique. Here, Guido, can you just support me, please? Uh, because I want to show it to you. So I got the Class Connect app in here. So with the machines which are working right now. So this is a tractor. We don't want to have the tractor. We're looking for the chopper in the field here right now. That's Alan's machine. So here is Alan, uh, we are somewhere around here. So we have the position, the GPS position, and we see that the machine is harvesting. To set up this procedure, we're going to optimize, shop quality analyze, and add a new analyze. So now, I hope you can see that. We have to do pictures from the plate, and uh, we spread some material out of the plate. It's important to spread it somehow that uh, Everything that we don't have a pile because the camera for sure can't see it through the pile and we take pictures. The important part is that we see 300 particles, so like the kernels on the pictures and uh, different, different sizes for sure. Thanks, Guido. So the second one. Can you take a little bit more, please? Aye. More? That's fine, yeah, that's good. And, it, and as well, you have to make sure that the frame, you should not take a picture like this, that the outside of the plate is visible, finally. Good. One more, please. I just want to make sure that the uh, calculation is working. Um, This is 300 particles. So that's it. Take over. So now I got the pictures visible here. So what you can see, and then you can select or deselect if you might not like a picture. So I go on upload images. So what's your name? So for Randy. What is that again? Randy. Randy. Yeah, perfect. So put in Randy. So Randy will buy this app here. Uh, yep. And then here we can create the analysis, finish analysis, and now we have to wait a little bit. I leave it here open and give you a little bit more explanation, especially what it should be. In general, what we see here on the bottom is uh, the um, levels of the corn silage processing score. So the idea is uh, get a value about more than 70%, because the 70% then the uh, developers or the inventors say that's a good quality for the cows. But honestly, um, what we expect now and what we see even from the fields is that dairy farmers are expecting more. They want to have crashed all kernels and the cow gets the most value out of it. But this is always a little bit of compromise between the dairy guy and between the contracting guy, um, the custom harvester. Everybody has a little bit different approach. 
So what you can expect now from this app, from the value is you get a value, you get a number, a figure, and this figure could variate. So as an example here we did with the same picture three tests, and even in this we see that there's a variation from 80 to 73 percent in uh, terms of the point stylish processing score. And this is really normal and this is also okay because um, we see the same if we evaluate with laboratories because we, we did in general thousands of samples to train this AI, AI model to that and we did also some comparisons with the laboratories. And I want to point out a dedicated one. There was 66% measured with the app, so with the mobile phone, and we uh, sent it multiple subsamples to two different laboratories. And how did it end up finally? So a variation from 58 to 73 percent. Even the laboratories are not that precise on this spot value. There's also a kind of variation, but everything is better than the cup with the kernels here, uh, because this does not mean anything. So let's have a quick look. We go to Randy. Uploaded 77 percent. That's quite good, a quite good value um, to share with you. So, very positive. We can continue with this uh, adjustment of the machine. So, what could be the use case here for the dairy guy? For sure, to control the contractor that is doing a proper job. From the contractor, it could be the idea, or from the customer harvester, could be the idea to make sure, uh -huh. dear uh, customer, dear, uh, dear dairy guy, I will. Uh, give you the commitment to deliver always more than 75% more CSPS, corn silage processing score, but for this I have to ask for a little bit more money. So this could be the other way. Yeah, everybody who wants quality needs to pay for quality finally, and uh, that is uh, the goal here, and that's a quite a good tool to use this tool here for doing this. They also had another workshop where they talked about the Cost Connect in Seamus. So we got to learn how this can help you if you have cost equipment as far as machine and farm management. And this is what those two gentlemen were talking about earlier on in the video when they were talking about the corn silage processing score and chop quality. That's going to wrap up this video. I will have some more videos coming from the event, including time out in the field, running the machine, riding in the cab, giving you all the angles there. I want to give a big thank you to Klaus for inviting me out here. And if you would, go down there, hit that like button. Feel free to leave a comment. If you're new to my channel, I would appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see more of what I'm doing, you can follow me along on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Farmhand Mike. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.